Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman Wargamer. It's part two of my playthrough of D-Day at Peleliu, designed by John Butterfield and published by Decision Games. We are at turn three, and as I said there would be, there were some misplays. So thanks to uh, everyone that put me right on those in the comments. This is what this playthrough is for, is to show me the error of my way so I can play this game properly. So let's go through quickly what I was put right on. First one is the tank movement. This is actually something I mentioned in the video last time. I moved this tank to here. And thinking about it, this would be a better position for it to be in because it's now sort of nearer everybody. So I've swapped that over and I've put back the infantry unit. The second one concerned this unit here, which got reduced when it was coming on here. And I reduced it again with the landing check card for this zone. Of course, it shouldn't have been as was quite rightly pointed out, can only be reduced once. The other one was this one here, when we were attacking these units. FL does not mean flamethrower, it's flanking. So, I could have, in fact, flanked with this. But there we go, you live and learn. So thanks for that. The other one, I couldn't have moved into B8 here because as I even pointed out myself, units have to stop once they enter an intense fire hex. So I've moved these back and moved this one here. I actually missed out on an action phase, but that's my own fault, so we'll carry on from here. So here we go for turn three, and the first thing is the US amphibious operation phase with the landing check card. So what I think we'll do, as it's been a little while since the last video, apologies for that, I was feeling a bit uh, under the weather, so I didn't get any videoing done. So I'll give those a quick shuffle, there we go. And we'll get down to the landing stages. So the first landing stage is white one, and the card is, what do we got here? Brown triangle. Remember my little cheat sheet tells me what color they are, and it's drift right. There is brown here, but no triangles, so nothing will get hit, and nothing will drift. White two, it's a blue circle, no drift. We have blue here, but no circles, so they can come on. Orange one, we've got a circle, it's green. Drift left, yeah, we got green. And we have a circle, so it would be this one firing, yep, it's undisrupted, so this one gets reduced. And drift left. Orange two is a red diamond, no drift. Yellow brown there, so no red, and there's no drift, so that will stay where it is. And then we've got these, orange three, and that's a yellow circle, no drift, 
No yellow here. We've got a circle, but no drift. So these can come straight on. Crikey. Oops, can I fit them all in? There we are. Now we can move them to the beach. So what are we going to do here? I only have two units, remember. But we'll put the HQ there. And remember, your tactics will vary tremendously to what I'm doing. All right, what have we got here? We've got a hero and... Oop. That's a three. Put the HQ there. Oh, not going to do much good, is it? It's already got a hero. Oh, well, we'll put that there. This HQ won't be able to do much with that tank. And we'll pop this reduced tank there. So HQ can go on here. Got some heavy weapons here. Let's pop that on there. This one. There we go, for better or for worse, we've placed them onto the beach. And now we bring down any other units that are due to come in on turn four. So let's just do that. These are going here because they've got the number four for their turn and 03, so they go there. But these have just got either white or orange on them. So that means we can place them anywhere we wish, but we have to do it now. Let's place, yeah, it's all very congested here. We'll pop that one here and we'll place uh, one there, one there. We'll be going to put the other one. Let's pop it here. There we are. Just before we move on to the next phase, yes, it started already, as I noted in the video. I placed this uh, here, which of course is not a landing site, so I can place it here or here. And we'll place it here. So, sorry about that. So next, first event phase. So we'll take a card and it is here, if you remember. Place a hero marker on any US unit and add a depth marker to one Japanese unit. That's what we had last time. Right. Let's do that. So we've got a hero marker, I've taken one randomly again, and we've got Jonesy. Uh, what are we going to put him? We could bolster up this side. Hmm. Or we could push forward here. Let's pop him here. As I say, you'll play this completely different. <laughs> so, unfortunately, now we have to place a Japanese depth marker on a unit that hasn't got one. And the priorities are Japanese unit closest in hexes to US units. Well, we've got these. But the next one is adjacent to a beach landing hex. 
So it's just that one. That's not a beach landing hex, as you saw earlier with my HQ. That one's already got one. Yeah. So, depth marker. Bag of doom. So, making sure we get it face down. We'll place it on this one. There we go. Next, Japanese fire phase. So what are we getting this time? Well, we've got some letters, but those don't apply until further on the turn track. So let's look at that. So, looking on my cheat sheet, we have red, green, and brown. So first is red, and it looks like the only one is this one. It has a depth marker, so it's gonna hit two units, which is unfortunate. So it's gonna hit the units with the most steps. So what have we got here? We're our hero again. We've got a one and a three. Here's a four, so that's definitely going to get hit. What have we got here? Yeah, that'll get hit as well. They're both three. So this one will definitely get hit for one and get reduced. And then it's closest to firing position. So it's going to be this one. Oh, what's happened here? Hold on. No, that's a three. So yeah, it's going to be closest to firing position, which is this one, unfortunately. So it won't be that. It'll be this, which will get reduced down to its sort of remnant counter. Let's go and get that. F21. Here's the reduced unit. We can get that in focus. You can see it's only got two steps now. So that will replace this one. And this will now go over there to the US 1st Marine Division Infantry Losses. Not too bad at the moment, but as you'll see as we move down the turn track, there will be critical loss numbers. And if they are exceeded by the amount of Marine units on the losses box, we lose the game. Green. So green is there. That's brown, isn't it? Tell by the white letters. What a performance if you're colorblind. Let's tidy that up on there. So green. And by the way, this didn't matter because they were both in intensive fire hexes. So we've got this one and this one. And this one. And this one. So it looks like Jonesy and his unit is going to get reduced. Anything else there? No, and it's brown. Sorry about that. For some reason, the camera stopped recording without telling me while I was doing the brown positions. So I had to sort of start it again. I hope I put everything back right. So sorry about that. Hope you forgive me. Brown. 
Now they're disrupted, so they can't do anything. And they're disrupted as well. So that looks hopeful. So all that's left to do is this tank up here, which is on a brown position. So if you remember from last time, they can fire or advance. They can't fire, nothing is in range. So they're going to advance and they're going to advance up to three hexes nearer the enemy. So they're gonna go there. So we've got to watch out for this now. And that I think is it, I hope that is. I hope the camera stopping didn't cause too many problems for the continuity. So all that's left to do now is to remove disruption markers from the Japanese of these colors. So red appears to have been done already. Green, that's brown, we'll do that in a moment, as is that, I think, yep. Yeah, they're all brown. So, brown, okay. We'll take those off. Which isn't good news for us. Here's one. I can get it. There we are. One here. And one there. That I hope it's everything. So that can go back up to the top. And we're on to the next phase. Oh, I've got to tell you that yes, I mentioned it in the video that I forgot to put disruption markers on to those units that were hit. If you remember, and I obviously didn't, that if the Japanese unit is hidden, any damage to US units causes them to be disrupted. So I've uh, done all those. So hopefully we're A-OK -okay now. So the next one would be the second event phase, but that doesn't occur to the US HQ phase, no. So US action phase. So here's our two actions that we can do. But remember, we do have HQs now, which will give free actions and preservation moves for those units that have just moved on to the beach. So I think we'll do one of those first with these two that came on a preservation move. We'll move that there. Tanks can't do preservation moves. Now this stack here is the one <laughs> that's flanking, and not flamethrower, but but I think I remember reading or watching something that said if you didn't have the requirements to attack a Japanese unit, then get in there, close combat. So I think we might do that with this one. So I'll tell you what we'll do, and I'll probably get this all wrong, but we're gonna have a go. We're gonna do close combat with these two here, and we're going to move into that space there. So we'll just move these off to the side. I'll pop those there just to remind me. And we'll have a go at close combat. First thing we do is reveal that depth marker. It's a one, but it has a little close combat on it there. And if you don't know, this close combat is done with the card deck. So we have to see how many cards each side get for the Americans. So first thing we do is draw cards equal to the number of steps up to a maximum of four. We've got six, so we're gonna get four. 
we'll pop those there. They get an extra card if at least one unit has a flamethrower. No, not this time. Another card if at least one hero is in the combat. No. And one more if the Japanese unit is in counterattack stance, which it isn't. So for the Japanese, they get one for each unit and depth marker. So they start off with two. Pop those there. Actually, let's turn them that way so we can see them a bit. I'll put them over there. There we are. Another card if the Japanese are attacking and not in counter-attack. No. A card if the Japanese have four or more total strength. No, they don't. One card, though, for each CC listed on the unit and depth marker. No, there's only one there, so they're going to get a card for that. The US aren't disrupted. No. Now we reveal cards. Remember, the Japanese unit was in a blue position, so that's the color we want to see for us, but not for the Japanese. Here we go. Oops. That's purple. So first we're looking to see if it has a close combat event on the card. It doesn't. Then we see if it shows the color of the position. No, it doesn't. And we are looking, of course, at these colors here. So nothing happens there. We discard that. Americans go. Again, we're looking for close combat CC on the card. No. It doesn't show the color. That's purple, I think. Just checking on my cheat sheet. No. So nothing happens there. Japanese. Nothing on there and no color. <laughs> Oops, no blue color. Oh, blue. Nothing to do with that. No, that's um, Bloody Nose Ridge. I saw the CC there. So what happens now? We've got a blue. We discard the Japanese top card. What was it, by the way? Oh, it was a blue on there, look. We now remove the depth marker because we would disrupt this for the first sort of attack. But we get rid of this. And that's that done. We need now to get another blue so we can now get rid of that unit. So what have we got? We've got a couple of cards left, right. No, no CC. Oh, ho, ho, look at that. But CC. This I don't think is going to apply, but I'll just tell you what they are. It's all to do with counterattacks. If the Japanese counterattack is not underway, treat as no event. No, no counterattack. If drawn from the Japanese pile during a Japanese counterattack, treat this card as no hit, regardless of color. And if drawn from the US pile during a Japanese counterattack, treat this card as a hit regardless of color. But as I say, no counterattacks going on, but we've got the blue. They're gone. And it's a non elite unit because it's not uh, sort of red colored. So that gets eliminated completely from the game. And that, I hope, is how you do close combat. Now, the good thing is, those American units are now in that position, I believe. Take that away. There we go. That's one action. These can't do anything because they're all disrupted. This one can't do anything either. We've got preservation moves to do and another action. Got a free action here, but you can't do anything, can't move anywhere. Unless he goes there. He 
And we'll move that. I think I can do that. There. Oops. Same with this one. Preservation move or free move with the HQ. Did that come up? Let me just check. No, that can't move because it came up last turn. Hmm. We'll move that there then. These can move, but they're blocked by these. It's no good on there, so we'll keep those there. It's awkward, isn't it? They can't do preservation moves. What about these? They both come on this turn. So I suppose we can move one there. I'm not going to be doing anything with those, I don't think. Or are we? Oops. Pop that like that for a minute, and this one will go here for its preservation move. Yeah, they're all far back, these uh, HQs. Can't use them to attack with a free action. And our heroes being with disrupted units doesn't help either. So well, we've got space there, I'm thinking. So for next turn, we can put those there. This can go here. And yeah, we've got, we've got room. So what I think we'll do then is... It's another depth marker, isn't it? We can either attack that one or that one. That hasn't got a depth marker. These can both, yeah. No, that can't attack, it's not uh, revealed. Let's attack with this unit here. With this one. And that's our Second action. Oh. What have we got on here? It's a full unit, so it's got everything. Browning automatic rifle and radio, I think that is. Let me just check after last time. And infantry units with four steps have everything. Oh, I do hope I'm playing this right. So let's have another look on here. US attackers possess required weapons. Yes. US attack strength compared to Japanese defense strength. Well, that's a full strength. Seven against one. Uh, attack strength at least double. So Japanese unit alone. Defeated. Again, that's not an elite unit, so that it gets eliminated. We don't move in. There's no uh, advance after combat. It's only when you do, I believe, close combat, you're actually in the same hex as the Japanese. That's our two US actions. Can we do anything else before we finish? Can't move, I could. That's that again. Now that came on last turn, that's got number two on it. Could move that there. Oh no, they can't. No, they can't do preservation moves, keep forgetting. That's blooming awkward. Can't move those, they're blocked in. That's, well I could move that HQ there I suppose. Uh, as a preservation move, I assume they can do them as well. Let me know if that's not the case. There'll be some shuffling back for the next video. This one. No, that came on last turn, turn two. Could move. 
Yeah, but it's no use on there because it's for infantry only. Keep knocking this one. I think that might be it. So the only thing to do is to remove disruption markers from the US units and put everything back ready for the next turn. Right, I think that's everything and I hope <laughs> that was done okay, as I say. If not, I'll be uh, shuffling counters backwards and forwards <laughs> for the next video. But in the meantime, back up to the phase track. Just before we go back up to the phase track, having a think about it, I think maybe I could move this unit with this HQ because that would be a free move and everything in that stack can be moved. So we're going to move that up there. Hopefully that's right, but I dare say you'll put me right if it isn't. Here we go. Discard drawn cards. So we've got them over here for the amphibious phase and those. Also, the ones for the close combat. I don't think, no. Here's the, oh, it's getting there, maybe next turn. So we don't shuffle them back in. And we're back to phase one. And turn four. So we'll stop the video there. I'm going to be doing them turn by turn because uh, if mistakes are made, it's easier to put them right for the next video. And believe me, I dare say there's some mistakes in this one. But I hope you're finding it enjoyable and of interest. If it was, and you haven't done so already, have a think about subscribing to the channel because it really does help. Another big help is pushing that like button of the video. Ring the bell if you want to be informed of other content the channel uploads. Yep, leave comments, especially if I've made a boo-boo somewhere, and hopefully we can put it right for the next video. And I'm hoping by the end of this playthrough, I shall be quite adept at playing this game. And thanks to everyone for being patient for the misplays that's happened already. But as I say, being colorblind, I'm concentrating on the colors, making sure I get them right. And that does mean mistakes probably happen. So thank you. Also, a big thank you to my subscribers. Thank you very much. And one last thing, if you want to support the channel a little bit further, well, now you can. You can buy the channel a coffee. And those coffees help tremendously by making it easier for the channel to upload new content. I'll leave a link in the description for you to check that out if you're interested. And thank you. So, once again, we shall leave the island of Peleliu. It's a difficult game. My tactics aren't the best, but we'll see what happens in turn four. So until then, as always, you take care and goodbye.